When you're conversing with a lot of comic book fans at your local comic shop, you'll hear there's two distinct reasons why people like and dislike DC Comics. Those who tend to dislike DC Comics typically say a variety of things, but it typically revolves around the central idea that DC Comics is too dark. Although it's for that same reason that fans will argue they like DC Comics, and the DC fans who like DC because it's dark are typically the fans who have a surface level understanding of their comics, who also think being an edgelord makes you cool, and that Rick is a character that you should emulate. And even though these are the type of people that don't reflect the majority of fans, the stigma of DC Comics being too dark should still be addressed. After immersing yourself in the writing philosophies between Marvel and DC, you start to wonder if DC Comics or DC fans really want darker stories. In the now matured comic book renaissance sparked by the surge of comic book movies, Marvel has clearly stolen the limelight. Their stories are typically more light-hearted with funny jokes and a nice PG-13 rating. And since the Marvel movies are the biggest gateway for the masses to start sitting down and actually reading the comics, they expect the same tone when they read the comics. And Marvel, of course, delivers on that writing philosophy. They make it light-hearted where it needs to be, insert some quips, and have the characters cracking wise when they can. Now, that's not to say that Marvel can't get dark at times, and that's certainly not saying that Marvel can't be deep with their stories, but for a mainstream audience who have been indoctrinated through the movies, they want something fun. Which justifies why Marvel fans say they don't like DC Comics because they're too dark. It's because of the preconceived expectations the movies have set for them. But now we look at the DC Comics, their fans, and DC's movies. Let's follow the same framework. DC made their own line of movies in response to the rising popularity of the MCU. And typically, they've fallen flat when it comes to their delivery. And it's because they've been falling into the same trap over and over again. The writers of DC movies know what the audience wants, but the corporate executives want their movies to be like Marvel. And these two conflicts of interest is a major factor in the garbage storytelling that the DCEU has been suffering. There are four exceptions to this, though. The Dark Knight, Wonder Woman, Shazam, and the most recent example being Joker. And the reasoning behind these is easy to explain. First, let's look at the ones in, stuck in the middle. Wonder Woman and Shazam. This is one of the few times where there wasn't truly a conflict of interest between the writers and the executives. Shazam is lighthearted, says plenty of quips, and is very... Marvel-esque in terms of his character. It was very easy to create a story that followed the same origin in the comics and had some darker tones that made it feel like it's a DC movie. Shazam is often used as comic relief, when he isn't being used as a method to push the severity of the plot like how he was first to be turned by the Joker toxin during the Metal storyline. So his character fit the Marvel formula well. Wonder Woman isn't really light-hearted, but she's not the kind of character that people would think is dark, like how Batman and Superman have slowly become. So the writing of those movies aligned with what the executives wanted. Whether you believe the movie was actually good or if it only seemed good in comparison to the long line of bad DC movies, it's clear that the mainstream audience found Wonder Woman to be a good movie if for no other reason than how approachable the delivery of the story was. It was more inspiring, having focused on the naive Diana as she learned about the world in a cute and innocent way, and even though seeing the world at war still held her virtues firm to her heart. The story was simple, and appealed to viewers who weren't necessarily fans of comic books. Now for The Dark Knight and Joker. In the years of passive conversations I've had with other comic book fans, I've heard some claim that they prefer the MCU but they think that The Dark Knight is the best superhero movie ever made. And the reason behind that is because it took place prior to DC doubling down to compete with Marvel. The writing was given more free reign to properly appeal to what fans wanted. They wanted the philosophy that's so deeply rooted in modern Batman. They wanted the Joker to be a villain that's not a gangster but someone who believes he's reached some demented form of enlightenment and is willing to force that idealistic nihilism on the world. They wanted the city of Gotham to be a character, 
since it's established in the comics that Gotham is a city that makes monsters, and that's how we got Harvey Dent becoming Two-Face. They wanted Batman to suffer personal struggles rather than just solve everything with fists and anger like he does in Batman v Superman. The Dark Knight delivers on what the fans truly wanted. It's not that it's dark, but rather they want a deep story. The two simply tend to go hand in hand when executed correctly, and it's very easy to screw up that execution. The same argument can be made with Joker. It's when DC is intentionally not trying to be like Marvel that it shines the best. Because the writing philosophy behind DC isn't about the superheroes, it's about what led someone to become a superhero. It's about the forces at work that surround them that l molds a person into who they are. And it's seeing how that individual deals with these forces. It's not better summed up than the simple, albeit overused, quote, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. It directly referenced Gotham City and the forces it pushes on someone to push them to be something greater or something worse. It's clear that Warner Brothers doesn't understand DC Comics and their stories. And the Warner Brothers movies influences the public's perception of the comics, which is not favorable. People think that because the movies are bad, the comics have to be bad too. You can't really explore what makes comics so interesting in movies because the medium of movies doesn't really work as well as comic books with these kind of stories. It's a short form story versus a long form story. Or really taking a long form story and trying to condense it into a short form story. And that's difficult to do. There's two goals when creating a narrative. It's to either evoke an emotion or to be entertaining. And initially, the movies that DC was making was trying to mimic the emotion-evoking comic books. And when that didn't really work, they switched gears to be entertaining, which has led them to be slightly more successful. DC stories work better in a long-form medium, like comics or TV shows, which is where DC gets the most success. More importantly, the heroes of DC stand for something larger than themselves. And I mean that in a meta-narrative. Anyone can claim that any hero stands for the people, or for the innocent, or whatever overused tripe that we've heard a thousand times over. Let's look at Superman, who is possibly the easiest example since they literally shove the meaning down your throat. He is supposed to be the personification of hope. It's not so subtle in Man of Steel when he literally tells the guard that the symbol on his chest means hope. It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. Well, here it's an S. But when reading his stories and how they've changed his character through the ages, they've focused less on the hero and more on the man. Clark Kent is raised on simple, grounded, and some might even say American morals that guides him throughout the comics. His mindset is simple. He is the one that everyone relies on when everything seems to be collapsing. It's why all the other heroes claim that Superman isn't a better hero than them, but he's a better man. It's because he is the pinnacle of hope. And that's why whenever Superman's death is portrayed, everything is quiet. Everyone is scared. Everyone feels the overwhelming dread choking them at their core because the death of Superman is the death of everything that mankind stands for. Another example is Batman, and Batman is often the hero that is targeted the most when anti-DC crusaders claim that DC is too dark. Batman is often seen as the man-baby that can't get over his parents' death, and if you're someone who only watched the movies, then you'd have every reason to believe that. Kill Martha! Why did you say that name? Martha! But as someone who grew up reading Batman, as someone who grew up so angry that he pushed away everyone around him, Batman is one of the best heroes to read about when suffering from a constantly volatile family life. Batman understands what it means to be truly alone. The reason he's adopted four Robins was because he's the one who can empathize with them the best. Surely the scene from Young Justice sums it up the best. It's not just his age. It's the fact that he lied about it. I didn't lie, exactly. I just left out the part about being a kid. A lie of omission is still a lie. You kept an important secret from us. No one in the League knew the truth. I did. I shouldn't be surprised. 
since you indoctrinated Robin into crime fighting at the ripe old age of nine. Robin needed to help bring the men who murdered his family to justice. So he could turn out like you? So that he wouldn't. The entire reason he wanted to help Robin find the killers was so that it could bring Robin catharsis, which is something that Batman never truly had. Or, for a different angle, people often ask why Batman doesn't kill the Joker. In fact, why doesn't Batman kill any of the major villains in Gotham? Why does he hold so strongly never to kill anyone? Jason Dodd seems to be doing a great job, right? You know, besides the fact that Jason is always angry and seems to never be able to move on from the traumatic experiences that the Joker inflicted upon him, the reason is because Batman knows he's mentally unwell. He never outright claims this because he can't spread doubt in those around him, but it's true. And Batman desperately hopes to find a cure for the Joker. Batman can't give up on these villains because if he gives up hope that the villains can't be cured, then he has no hope of ever curing himself. He's a man of self-reflection. Batman believes that he needs to become part of the darkness, if for no other reason than so he can understand those he fights against. And by ridding his fears and becoming that which dwells in the shadows, he also began to understand, at least on a primal level, what these villains feel. He stubbornly rubs against the door of insanity and never actually manages to cross over into the next room because he has to prove to himself that there's hope for these villains. Now, when asked, do DC fans really want darker stories? The answer is no. What DC fans want is a deep story. The moments when these heroes are undergoing a metamorphosis or when they have to show a new level of humanity or when these characters have to empathize with those they have to fight. These moments are what the fans truly want because it's these moments that show that these are more than just characters. These are symbols for something greater. That's all fine and dandy, but I've got a little bit to add. Hi, youtube.com slash comic drake here, and let me tell you what. I really think that the focus on darkness and angst really misunderstands what DC Comics is all about. I mean, sure, that's Batman's shtick and he is by far their most popular character, but at its core, the DC universe revolves around hope. And that's not just some hokey nonsense either. It's repeated over and over again in the comic books. Hope is the North Star of the metaverse. Makes a lot of sense, considering that Superman was the birth of the DC multiverse, and the symbol on his chest literally stands for hope. This page of Superman talking a girl down from suicide is a powerful sequence, and it is frequently shared around as Superman at his best. DC is a universe of legacy, a universe of official unwavering romantic pairings, a universe of family both biological and found. Most importantly though, it's about hope that good will always triumph over evil, no matter how bad the odds. Darkseid could literally take over the entire planet and enslave most of humanity, but there's still a chance. Dark stories can be a lot of fun, sure, but there's a time and a place for them. If every superhero is the same tone, then things get boring. Sure, a Justice League made up of a bunch of Batman sounds like a lot of fun on paper, but in execution, that's how we get something like Batman v Superman, and uh, a lot of people don't like it. And perhaps the pinnacle of DC Comics understanding what the fans want is with their new DC Black Label line of comics they've recently set in motion. The entire point of the Black Label is to signal to fans that these are darker stories, but in truth, it's DC understanding what the fans want and signaling to everyone that the comics with the Black Label are what they're truly searching for. It's a method to give the writers more creative freedom so they can deliver on the stories that the fans truly want. Of course, not every DC fan is going to want these kinds of stories, plenty of them are content with the way they are now, but I think it's fair to say that there's a trend in the history of Batman where the most popular stories are Frank Miller's The Dark Knight, or Alan Moore's The Killing Joke, or for a more recent example, Scott Snyder's The Death of the Family. The point is, when you're arguing why you like DC Comics more than Marvel, or if you're a Marvel fan and you don't understand why people enjoy DC Comics, this is why. Thanks to Drake for helping me make this video. A lot of the ideas were formulated thanks to him and his expertise on comic books. And if you're not sick of my voice yet, then please check out my channel Comic Drake, where I break down the crazy world of comics easy enough for newcomers to understand, but deep enough for even longtime fans to learn something new every single time. Maybe you can check out my video on the lost Spider-Man suit that led to the creation of Venom. That one, yeah, that one's pretty good. There's a link to his channel if you want to check out his videos.
Stay beautiful and keep playing.